The Earbuds Podcast, presented by Headliner Music Club. Welcome to the Earbuds Podcast, episode number seven. Lucky seven. It's uh, we got the we got the group here. We got five. What's up, five? Ooh. Aloha. <laughs> oh, welcome back from Hawaii. Yes, he was in uh, Hawaii and just got back. You're on Hawaiian time, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, and we got Neil Jackson in New York. Oh, hello. And I'm actually going to Hawaii next week. Nice. I'm on board. Jersey, Jersey, dog. We're waiting for you. I will get over there. I will. I will. Jerome. I'll, I'll make it over there. And we got Jerome Baker the third yes. from DC yes. joining uh, us. I for, would like to go to Hawaii as well. So let's just just bring us all. We'll, yeah. all. we'll all go together. That'd be we'll sure. do a we'll do a what's it called? Earbuds alumni trip after like the the year episode. Boom! There we go. There yeah, we that'd, go. Be, that'd be good. Who's we'll gonna go scratch? He's gonna pay for it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, sponsored by HMC. Yeah, <laughs> out there crushing some uh, malasadas. Oh. <laughs> malasadas. <laughs> crushing buns. <laughs> That's a term. Just so you guys know, uh, the context of what, how that happened is uh, before no, no, we no. started. <laughs> no, no, no. No, 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 no. Neil said we're going to be crushing buns or whatever you said, and I, didn't, I was like, "What the? F- what, what's crushing buns?" And crushing, goes, crushing buttons. Oh, and he's okay. like, "You don't know what crushing buns is?" I go. No, man, I've never heard of that in my life. He's like, oh, bro. Oh, and my then God. Like, no one's ever said crushing buns. Crushing buns. If, if you are listening to this on YouTube or if this makes it as a clip, <laughs> make it. A, uh, Please put God, it in the comment of what crushing buns means to you. <laughs> We're going to oh take a God. survey. Is it like the same as like taking down some uh, glizzies? <laughs> <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Oh my Is that how we're gonna start off, guys? Yeah, <laughs> same, same but different. <laughs> oh boy! All right. Well, um, yeah. So that's uh, that's all of us. So welcome to the show. Uh, <laughs> I'm Jersey. I'm in Chicago, by the way. Uh, big shout out to everyone that is uh, tuning in on uh, Apple uh, Apple Podcasts, Spotify. Also, I found out there's a lot of people that actually do watch us on YouTube, which oh, is. Shit amazing um i was in a few different cities and people said that they they go oh i I watched the podcast and i and i my first question was what do you mean by watch and they were like oh on youtube and i think before we started the last episode offline we were all discussing i was like no one watches this shit i'm like who watches podcasts because i figured like you know people are in their cars or they're you know working out or something like that but uh, uh, we have a lot of people that actually tune in watch so that's why i brush my hair every time yeah i brushed my teeth today because i was like i don't want something stuck in there and people are watching or anything there you like that go, there yeah. you go. so um <laughs> yeah big shout out to everyone on youtube um shout out to dj nine who uh was uh, listening and tuning in so big shout out to him uh if you guys have any shout outs or say what's up to anybody um i, I just saw nine in hawaii <laughs> he was with Polly. so yeah shout out to nine man Nice. Anyways, hmm. who do I have? I had I had a bunch of people last week, and you cut me off. Now I'm like, fuck. Oh my bad. Who oh, shout out to uh, Jay Compose. <laughs> He's a avid listener. He and said it. he learned. Yeah. Shout out to all of Hawaii. All of Hawaii. Yeah. All, all of Hawaii. Hawaii. Yes. There you go. And the shrimp truck. That shrimp mm. truck is. Found Snacks. a new one, Jenny's. I've, Jenny's. I've never Jenny's? been to the shrimp truck. Jenny's. You've never been to the shrimp truck? truck? No. Giovanni's oh. and all that. No. Dude, here. Giovanni is up on the North Shore, but then there's when you go to the Giovanni's shrimp truck, there is a corn stand. This guy has corn on a stick and it's it sounds weird, but it's really, really good. He fire grills it and then it, oh, it's no, kind that of, sounds fire. Oh, yeah. It's it's so you know how there's all those like little huts around there. Like so on the opposite side, people are like, yeah, so there's like a corn stand and this guy just like fire grills this corn on a stick and then he puts different toppings on it. But that one is shout out to the wild. corn guy. <laughs> it's wild that 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 Jersey's teaching a Hawaiian Hawaii. <laughs> is this wait, is, is this one right? Oh, no, I'm, I'm I Hawaiian. Just, so. I, threw up, I threw up the shocker, so I didn't know what <laughs> the shocker. The shocker. Okay, forget it. You know That's what? Never right. mind. <laughs> <laughs> for the YouTube people, my bad. Shocker, the shocker. I, I threw the shocker up, and that's I thought that's just this is one, right? Oh man! All right, well, <laughs> this is this is, and we're only in the first segment, guys. Yeah. All right. Um. So five. Tell us about uh. How did Hawaii go for you? Hawaii was 
Amazing. A lot of drinking. Are you talking about the, the club? <laughs> <laughs> um, I played Just at everything. I played at District, a uh, nightclub in Hawaii. Younger demo. A lot of military um, kids that go out. A lot of locals. And uh, they love EDM and sing-alongs. And R&B. A lot of R&B. So I would say like, it's a true, like, it's a good open format room. Because I went up and down. Um, Debin, who closed out, closed out Debin. with a uh, big shout out to Debin. Yeah, shout out to Debin, man. One of the my favorite DJs out there, and um, he closed out with some uh, uh, Hawaiian music set. What do you call that, Scratchy? Like so, like island music, music. closed out with island music, it was dope. Um, island music, yeah, like, you know, like Jay Bug, Jay Bug, Fiji, uh, Kai. yeah. We gotta bring in. We gotta do a whole uh, episode on island music because yeah, you can get Jay Dabin on. I didn't know that was a thing. Yeah, it's huge. And then you got a party coming up too, right? Uh, you want to speak yeah. on that? Uh, throwing my first party with the homie Schematics. Uh, he, he just kind of brought it to me. He was like, "Yo, let's do this party." Blah blah blah. I was like, "Yeah, I want to do like a Tokyo Japan inspired, like you know." party like bringing like the essence of like tokyo nightlife like just kind of like play whatever like it's like just a good music party but like i think i may be playing more so like r&b classic hip-hop a lot of classics and uh some city pop like some japanese city pop here and there and yeah it's on uh may 2nd thursday in downtown is it a monthly LA. thing monthly party I'm not sure yet, but I think if this one goes well, we'll do it once a month. What uh, is it? What's it? What is it called that you want to plug that Sh to? Shibuya Social Club. And that's in LA, right? In LA at, at the Moxie at uh, Saints and Sinners, I think is the name of the venue. It's a Houston Brothers uh, venue. So excited about that. So nice. Yeah. Cool. All right. Big shout uh, out to Schematics. Yeah, shout out to Schematics. <laughs> and Neil Lamar. Jackson. Uh, tell us about how your uh, spring is going in New York City right well, now. Well, we finally got sun, so it's it's finally hitting seven, 70 degrees, so no jackets, which Damn. is not even a sweater. So things are good. You're a rebel, man. You're a rebel now. You Jeez, know, yeah. I was like, you know, oh, fuck this oh, jacket. Let oh, it can't, be bo yeah. can't be bothered with it. Smack some oh, buns. Yeah. 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 The, 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 it's the crush, are out. Crush, Jesus. crush buns. Fuck. My bad. <laughs> Jesus. Oh, sorry. <laughs> 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 can't be can't be running around here smacking buns, dude. It's sorry. It's just yeah. that's, it's frowned that's upon. not okay. Yeah. <laughs> <It's frowned> yep. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, the sun's out. Everybody's uh everybody's starting to come out of uh out of their caves. So it's good. I uh last minute I played another SNL after party. Oh wow. Oh you did. Um, last yeah, week? I played the one You're with Ryan Gosling? Uh with Kristen Wig. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah. I did the Who was the Kristen musical Wig. guest on that one? Ray, R A Y E. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Please oh, wow. tell me I said yeah. that right. I think so. Um, <laughs> unfortunately, you. I didn't get a chance to see my crush, Kristen Wig. But um, do you have a crush on Chris? Kristen yeah, Wig? I know, I know. I, uh, I do, I do. Uh, and I'm just gonna throw that out there. Yeah, that's a no. little strange, but okay. It's, it's dude. Oh, she's it's, cute. Yeah, she's cute, and she's funny. <laughs> Is it, you know, is it the personality thing that you like? Or is it like... Well, I, I, I just want to know. I'm a personality <laughs> person. Yes, I okay. am. I'm just you curious know. to understand oh what your, uh, <laughs> your thing is here. Dude, if, if you saw Kristen Wiig uh, during Bridesmaids when the the whole plane thing that was it i was like I oh help her. she was help hot me, love her plane <laughs> <laughs> in Bridesmaids. Help me, i'm poor i was oh. like i i think i love her now so uh i played but she wasn't there unfortunately but you know, <laughs> unfortunately, she wasn't there, but Kenan Thompson was there and like a few others. Man, he he stays stays outside, party, no, man. no, she, he, they went in. It was, do, it do, was. Does anyone ever like come up to you, ask for a request or anything? Or are they like, what do you play at these parties? Is just everything know, or just how do you read this room? Because they're they're kind of like partially, I feel like they're forced to be there because it's the rap party. But do they like. Do, are oh, they coming no. to turn up or are they just like what is oh, it oh no man at some at one point it was like it was like demon time <laughs> demon wow. time wow i don't want to know what that means yeah, but was, I, 
at one point time. it got a little intense and we were just like i was like all right i got like 20 more minutes and i'm i'm out <laughs> gate walked out sun's out so oh wow damn. so it's yeah. like that huh no shit. oh yeah it was time to go oh yeah it was uh it was a time sun's out Raiders. buns out <laughs> <laughs> sun's out buns out smack crushed bun, crushed buns man there's crushed. a lot uh jerome our our guests, our special guests, which you got uh, in DC. <laughs> I know that cherry blossoms are are blooming. Cherry blossoms have bloomed, are blooming a little early uh, this year. You know, <laughs> it's good to know. <laughs> no, no, honestly, uh, I almost flew there for the cherry blossoms. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's like that's a really a thing. I didn't know that. Oh uh, no no no! It's like it's a real thing. It's yeah, traffic. no, it's dope. It's yeah. um. It's crazy. It's, a whole this is, it's, a, it's just a tree, though, right? It's just yeah, tree with no, pink flowers. They are. They were gifted uh, to the United States a bunch of years ago, and so yeah. there's from Japan. T- from Japan, yeah. But mm-hmm. there's tons of them, and they're yeah. on the tidal basin, which which is like coming from Virginia into DC. Yeah. So with that, it's a whole stop traffic and look at the flowers. And yeah, like outside. Say, yeah, outside yeah. of Japan, like DC has like. The most they're, they're right? everywhere. They're in the neighborhoods. Yeah. They're they're on the freeways. They're literally everywhere. So, so how are your allergies? That's my question. Because uh, this this year I've been great. Knock on, you know, knock on. Okay. I, that's my big concern because right now I can't smell. I can't. My eyes are puffy. You know, I, it's uh, on the way. It's on the way for sure. I know that. But yeah. uh, it's been it's been good allergy season so far, and um, you know, we're just transitioning in the spring. It's been in the seventies and eighties past few days, so it's full on. Wow. Summer here right now. It doesn't so, get that cold in DC though, right? Like in uh, the winters and we, stuff. Uh, we get snow. You know what I'm saying? We get some pretty, pretty, pretty cold weather. I mean, people will break out the arcteric stuff and go skiing down the streets. Like it's mm. really, it's really, uh, it, it's a nice four seasons here for sure. Nice, yeah. Yeah. nice. So, um, cool. Would you guys yeah. have pandas? Because if so, then that'd be like the duo that five well, would be. No, no, no they, they, just they did. They got actually, them back. Right? Actually, five can give us the because five was out here for that. They almost so. got repoed and then they brought them. Oh, back. they did get repoed. <laughs> they did get repoed and then they just, they got repoed. Do they do that the at week? night? Do they do that? Like somebody sneaks in there and like. <laughs> no, they did a whole thing where like they, they, they bit. They did a farewell thing with the pandas yeah. while they were on like going on the plane, and, and that was the week I was going out there to see them. So that, that sucked. You made a trip. Up. Okay, just for context so people understand this. Five made a trip to DC across the country to see pandas. Oh no, I was playing in Milwaukee already. So you know what? Sunday, let's go see the pan or I I played Thursday in Milwaukee. It's like, you know, let's go to DC, hang out for the weekend, go see the pandas, go to Glenstone, go to uh, you know, the museum in the Potomac. And uh yeah, the week of no, that Wednesday when I was or planning to go to DC, they announced that they're shipping the pandas back. Yep. <laughs> but now they just said they're shipping them back. <laughs> yeah. Oh, they're, they're getting taken away again? No, no, they're coming no, back. No, they're coming back. My to boy, these, oh. Stevie Dapp, I, actually, he's a listener to one of my boys. He was actually like, yo, tell five they're coming back. Yeah. I and saw it. No, trust me. Uh, I'm Wait, on so panda hold, on, hold, on, hold on. Let me get this straight. So if you're a panda in the zoo, right, you get shipped across the fucking world yeah. to go home. You think you're back at home. Just to go all the way back to DC two months later. We'll probably be like, no, no, no. They're coming back like next year or like oh, so end they of get the year. Like, they have like Some a time year to rest. Yeah, a yeah. year. Off. And then uh, what the, if they send them like they're not real pandas or like send them like robotic? <laughs> well, they're saying that they're AI like panda. No, yeah, or something. they're, they're like, saying they're uh, they're spies in the panda suits. <laughs> <laughs> that's like the uh, that's the worst. <laughs> that's that's the new that's the new thing. You got to watch I, out for the new pandas that come I, back. I think what what might have happened too is the zoo uh, attendance might have dropped so severely that they had to figure a way to get the pandas back because we were on the verge of losing the hockey team, the basketball team. After and the losing panda. the pandas, so it's like, <laughs> yeah, you gotta get the like, pandas, yo, we, man. Because like the zoo is free; it's an amazing attraction, and um, you know. But I can imagine that people don't want to go anymore. It's like, what are you? What are we going for? Damn, yeah. I, I I feel bad for the other animals. Like, yo, yeah, pandas are gone. Like, yo, we have no, <laughs> yeah, those we are have our, no yeah. draw. It's like a <laughs> like some open format DJ. The <laughs> Oh shit! <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, I'm open format <laughs> DJ. I can say that shit. Oh, shit. <laughs> no, you're wow. <laughs> wow. I feel attacked. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the pandas are like John Summit and Don Ballard. <laughs> 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 
Oh shit, oh, man. We're Sorry. just like, oh, I love my open <laughs> format DJs. Just just putting that out there, but oh man, but Yo. we ain't pandas. Everyone else is just openers. Oh. They're, just, they're just openers and fillers. Oh. The giraffes are upset. Oh my the god. Oh, yeah, that was crazy. <laughs> Yeah, we got that. Oh, hey, you know, they, people have been asking for a merch drop. That would be our merch drop. Oh. <laughs> we ain't pandas. We ain't pandas. Yeah. Hey, that'd that'd be pretty a, hard. That's a great idea. Yeah, yeah. right. That's a great right. idea. Oh, yeah. yeah. See, I'm thinking here. Come on, come on. Um, uh, but that's uh, but yeah. so DC's DC's popping right now is what DC's you're saying. Really, DC's Dude, really, really DC, good right yeah. now. Yeah, DC's really good. Please come out if you guys ever find yourself around. Uh, Mar- Marco Marco was just here over the weekend. He had a great time. And uh oh, Marco Polenta? Marco, Marco Polenta. <laughs> yeah, Marco Polenta was oh, Marco, Marco Polenta and I, we uh, we DJ together Saturday night at my gig and we had a great time. Nice. So if you guys ever find yourself out here, man, please please come hang out. It's always a good time. Sweet. You'll see me when the pandas come back. Also, <laughs> shout, uh, shout out to Kellen. Shout out to my brother. Yes. Oh, yeah, Kellen. 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 Yes. Yeah, 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 we were going to do a whole segment on Kellen, but if you wanted to, uh, that way, yeah. I see Kellen every weekend in Arizona. So, uh, oh, shit. Big That's shout right. out to Kellen, man. Yeah, to I, Kellen. I'm still tripping on how Five treated uh, Milwaukee and DC like it was like going to like Wawa or something like that. was like, yeah, I just found out the pandas was leaving, so I just, no, just went no. there from Milwaukee. Yeah. He's I was like, like, yeah, it's right there. No, but like, I, I, <laughs> I've told the story though, like Milwaukee to DC and then like DC to I found out the pandas were in Atlanta. So Sunday we went to Atlanta to go see the pandas. You went on a panda tour. Yeah. Okay. You saw them in Atlanta though? Yeah. Oh tight. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But five and I kicked it though. We had a good time, man. We ate some breakfast tacos. It was a good time. Oh Michelin Michelin guide breakfast tacos and then uh <laughs> Jerome took me to the the real DC. <laughs> oh, we walked down the street. Yeah, <laughs> we walked, got a little real. Yeah, like a block away. <laughs> yeah, I was like, hey, you have to stay with us until our Uber came. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, my girl had a bright fucking red fucking purse. I'm like, can you? Uh... <laughs> she, was, she was. She stood out a little bit, but it was yeah. all good. It was all good. She didn't the real, real. She was just like, oh, what are you talking about? It's nice out here. I was like, yeah. nah, nah. Yeah, we, uh, they highballing us. We look, we look. Yeah. <laughs> wow, we nice. stood out. That's for sure. Yeah, it's nice. all good, man. No, it was um, good times though, man. Cool. Well, we'll dig a little bit more into DC uh, with Jerome coming up in a little bit. Uh, I was just in San Diego and then Austin and Salt Lake City. Uh, San Diego was a uh, big shout out to everyone in San Diego. That was a lot of fun. And I had some people that talked about the podcast. So nice. Um, you know, and people are listening or watching because people watch it on YouTube. And then Austin for South by Southwest. Austin's always a great time. Big shout out to CRG for taking care of us. Um, damn, a lot's going on. He's like, we haven't done a, a podcast since middle beginning of March, I think. So damn. Yeah. Uh, yeah, just catching up on all this. And then Salt Lake City this past weekend. Salt Lake City is always a good time. And um, yeah, so everything, uh, everything's been good, man. Everything's been good. So let's go on to the charts really quick. Let's just breeze through these. Just uh, and just, you know, for people that are listening right now, I, I just love reading these things because it kind of, you know, kind of does your homework for we're kind of doing your homework for you. So in case you're wondering, like, shit, I don't want to go through all these charts and figure out what songs are popular or whatever. I, I think that's kind of um, we just want to give you guys a little update on like what's trending right now and stuff like that. So with the HMC top charts right now, top tracks uh, fade, you guys have been putting out some uh, just fire in the past month. Uh, yep, how many yep. songs have you guys put out? Uh, six so far. Six. So that's five. So people are just tuning in. That's five and Eric Deluxe, and they they do fade. And, and we're uh, uh, strictly a house act now. So nice. Okay. So like Dom Dalla and John Summit, very similar. Fisher Pandas. and uh, Pandas. Chris Lake. <laughs> I get it. Yes. I get it. I get it now. <laughs> they are they are pandas now. They so are pandas. They have number one with Rack City. Um and that is the number one spot in the HMC chart. So you have James Hype and uh, Wild, uh number two. Number three is John Summit is uh Shiver. Number four, Lincoln Park, uh Kazis, who big shout out to Kazis who was on our podcast last 
month uh, with Numb. Uh, we have Big Sean Precision, Sexy Red, Get It Sexy, Fashion, and Rich Edit. Uh, Kendrick, All Right, number seven, uh, with Nova's edit. Clooney, David Guetta, uh, a bunch of other people sipping yet. Cases edit, another Cases edit, wow. And uh, Rick Runder at number nine with Carnival, his remix, and Clooney sipping yak at uh, number 10. And that's just the HMC club edit. Which... Oh, we got five tracks out, but we, we got more another one on the way. <laughs> nice. As far as we're fading, yeah. So five and Eric Deluxe have been taking over those charts. Okay, let's move to uh, Billboard real quick. Billboard number one, future uh, Metro like that. Uh, number two is Hosier, Hoser, or I don't know Hoser. how you want to pronounce it. Hoser. 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 Uh, Too Sweet, uh, Benson Boone, number three, Teddy Swims, number four. I think Teddy Swims has been getting a lot of remixes. I, I don't know if anyone plays them, but... The Tiesto one's the main one I think people are playing. Oh, people and, are playing. Okay. Yeah. I didn't know if that's... Uh, I'm playing the Tiesto ones. So. Is it going... Is it working? Do people know it? In the big room, like... If you're in like, you know, uh, EDM house set, it works. Nice. People people do sing that song. Okay. So Teddy Swims, Lose Control, uh, Beyonce, Texas Hold'em, number five. J. Cole, Seven Minute Drill, number six. Which one is that song? That's not the disc record, right? That's a that disc record. Yeah, that's that a disc record. That's the that apology record. pulled off he, uh, or, stream. Yeah. Okay. He pulled it off? Yeah. He really felt bad about dissing Kendrick. Yeah, so I don't. So it's charted number six, but I don't know if yeah. that's. I don't know if that's a playable record. Do people play that in the club? No, not no. for the. No. Okay. Uh, Jack Harlow, number seven, "Loving on Me," still up there. Oh, Loving like, on, dude. That, it feel like it goes away and then it comes right back. But yep. Yeah, that, that's it's a good record. I think it's it's one of those timeless records though. It doesn't get annoying. It's just fun. Um, okay, number eight, Ariana Grande, "We Can't Be Friends." Type shit number nine, future metro, and number ten, no con, uh, stick season. Hmm. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Not uh, playing number, that one. Yeah, I don't know that either, but it was just fun to name. All right. Uh, top top fifty. We're not going to go through fifty of TikTok, but uh, top songs right now is Alec Olson. Someday I'll get it. I listen to that. It's a very strange song. It's very chill. But it's trending. G Easy Lady Killers 2, the Chris the Christoph Anderson remix. That actually, I didn't know what that was when I was doing research for this. It's a it's a it's a really cool record, actually. It's in my top um, It's not that far is it off from the original Jesus? though. Huh? No, it's old. It's like uh, it's, old, it's for, off his first album. And then this guy or this producer kid but just he remixed, randomly. It's an old remix though. Is it old? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's from. Because he uh, just added like some drums and like a little bit, like he changed the melody up a little bit, and dope. it just yeah. went off on TikTok. Hold on, I'll tell you right now. Uh, Ten years ago, it was on. That, it, it got uploaded to YouTube. It says ten years ago, and it just went viral. It says, I don't know. Uh, yeah, it says uh, ten years ago, seven point six million views. So. I don't know. It's it's good though. It's, I never even heard really? that song before. That yeah, it's cool. So okay, uh, what else we got here? All right, Carnival number four, number well, five. Wait, number three was Too Sweet Hosier and Hosier. Yeah, I just I don't know. Does anyone play that? Is that even a thing? No. What was their big song again? It was like Hosier was uh, that Take Him to Church. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Was it called Take Him to Church? Yep. Was it? Yeah. Whew, I remember that. Wow. All right. Uh, Carnival number four, five, Get It Sexy. Number six, Helen Back by uh, Bakar. Bakar. Do you know Bakar? Yeah, this song is dope, but mm. I mean, you can't play it. Okay. That was like, wait, a, is it? That was, was the, big... uh, that was the, what do you call it? Um, the pandemic song yeah. for us. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, you hop back on the, on the charts again, right? Yeah. Bakar's oh. dope. Yeah, no. like is he a rapper? that lane. No, yeah. no, no, no. He's like, what was that? Like UK soul, maybe? That was a pour know. over yeah. anthem right there. Yeah. They Neil, you Neil, you turn me on to that record. Yeah, Bakar's right dope. Bacar. That that song is dope. All right, uh, Artemis. Uh, I like the way you kiss me. I love that record. I think record? it's. Uh, have you guys heard it? 
Mm -mm. No. It's like what, oh. 170, 180 BPM? Uh, no. Uh, it's pretty yeah. fast. Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. But is it like you Oliver can split Tree? It no, it's not. It's like an indie rock record, dude. Yeah. It's really, really good. I'll, I'll talk about it because I got that in my, uh, on my ones to watch. So, oh, okay. Uh, D Joe, end of the beginning. Okay. I didn't know that song. I think last month I was like, who the hell is D Joe? And I was like, what's end of the beginning? I was like, I don't know. It was in the top charts. And then I started doing research after the podcast. And I feel like an idiot because the song talks about Chicago. So I feel wow. really dumb. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm over here like, I'm like, man, I don't even know what that is. And and I afterwards, I'm like, I can't stop listening. His, his album's really good. It's the dude from Stranger Things. Oh, oh no way. It's one yeah. of the emo kids. Wow. Yeah. And it's really, really, uh, he has a, like a really good album. So that but that song came out two years ago too so it's oh it uh, is him that's so yeah. crazy <laughs> no it's a trip man and in, in, in the and the record's really good too so his whole album's pretty good but that that's from two years ago i didn't even know that but, just so uh, you guys know a uh, d joe is his actual name is joe keery from stranger things just yeah. so people are and he went to, to school he went to college in chicago and that's why that whole song is like big and everything or that's why he's talking about chicago but yeah all right number nine boss man d-lo yeah. talk my shit which DC. i still don't i don't get it but yeah i don't it's a it, his flow is really weird man yeah um okay and then the last one is uh gotta only by floy Minor. uh this is it's a it's a spanish <laughs> i don't know man. I, <laughs> You guys wanted me to say that shit. That's I why. I could, no, I know. I know exactly what you're doing. I was like hiding behind the mic. I know. <laughs> you know what it was? You knew I was gonna struggle, and any one of you could have came up and been like, "Yo, let me take this one for you." you but know, why? Like, we want people to listen hang to me this out like podcast. That. No, I know what you guys were doing on that. He's like, you know, I can't do the Latin. That's record, what they're so. looking for, man. That's, that's messed up. That's messed up. So I hope you guys are happy that everyone got to hear, hear that. But um, okay, cool. Uh, Apple Music City Charts. Um, LA is got. Oh, where are we at in LA? All right. The art. Right, yep. What do you know? The record I just mentioned is number one out there. So by, the, by Floyd. No, Floyd oh. Mignor. Uh, <laughs> stop it. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. All right. New York is uh, like that future metro. Um, that's doing pretty good. And Chicago is like that. Get it sexy. And then uh, Glorilla is up there too. And then DC. You got the DC one, Neil? Yes. Thank God that one number one for LA is not in DC. Uh, <laughs> so I don't have to pronounce that. Like that future metro booming uh, wannabe Glorilla. Number two, out of my hands, future Metro Boomin. Number four, type shit, future Metro Boomin. Red Leather, which is a dope track mm -hmm. uh, from his, from the We Still Don't Trust You album. That's with future Metro Boomin and J. Cole. And it's it's a dope record. Mm -hmm. uh, Get It Sexy, number six. Uh, we Still Don't Trust You, future Met Metro Boomin. Dope song. Don't know how you're going to play that at a club. It definitely needs a remix. Um, Jerome, are you playing any of these records like the top? Is I mean, I just want to know how accurate some of these things are. Yeah, is the, yeah, yeah. The, like glow, that. the, the glow Rilla, is that uh early? Is, okay. 12, 12, 12, 30 is the club Yeah, Give us so times. Like, that would be great. Yeah, you, you know, know be so, like, hey, that's like eleven forty five. So you know, people we're talking like the club club, not the parties, right? But the club club with the basketball players and all that, right? So <laughs> yeah. yeah. Give us the basketball players. You know yeah, there we go. So yeah. so so like that definitely is, is a 130, 145. Wanna be is as their tables start to fill up. You know what I mean? The first couple of tables full of girls only pop in there. They want to hear some joints, but you you gotta save the hard shit for like the drug dealers or the weed smokers. You know I know I mean? exactly so, what you're talking about. Yes. So, right? yeah. so, <laughs> <laughs> Got it. Okay. So now nah, I heard, I heard the, the story about, you know, the, uh, bull, the bulls. So I'm just giving you yeah, context for sure. Giving Thank you. you context. Um, yeah. yeah. And not, and not part two. Yeah, like that, that was part two. Guys, that was a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> you've learned since you've grown but, since then. Yeah. Um the sexy red is a, is definitely a 145, 2 o'clock record. I mean, at this point, we have to make sure the bottles are out, the tables are full, 
And because uh, DC kind of pushes to about three thirty uh, uh, on a Friday, Saturday night for your for your big urban parties or clubs, exactly. Excuse me, type shit definitely getting played. Red yeah. leather would probably get played early because it's it's a little cooler. You know what I'm saying? It's not so much of like. Are I people wanna... up on the new stuff though? Are they yeah. like okay? Yeah, so they're yeah. so when like the Glorilla or the that sexy red record is pretty new, right? I would say like what two three weeks. Yeah, but we're I mean we're second. In any when any when it comes to anything trapped out or anything, DC is like second in the country. Before like right behind either Atlanta or wherever Sexy Red is coming from these days. So we're right there. Like if it's popping down there, and you have to play it in DC. Got it. So everything yeah. on this top ten list is pretty. It's pretty. Is yeah. It's it's DC to, to its core yeah. and in, in, in your clubs, in the club nights for sure. Yeah, not specific parties. That yeah, you're not saying. the parties. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Cool. All right, we'll get back into DC uh, after we go over these trending artists. Speaking of future and Metro Boomin, uh, you the, just put the second album out what on Friday. You guys all listened to it, or at least some of you guys did, right? What's your thoughts? I have it. Uh, I feel like it's a little it's a little slower. Uh, there's a little more R and B vibes on this one. Um, it's not as aggressive as the first one, possibly. And Metro Boomer was saying, you know, there's like a bunch of songs and the order of the songs is weird. Like it kind of starts over when you have it, right? So what they're saying is it's a second album and it's a mixtape, right? Mm-hmm. So like when you, when, you, when you look at it, it's like one through nine and then it starts over like one through seven. So it's just a, it, it, so he, so Metro Boomer said it himself, he said, we delivered y'all a second album and a mixtape with this newest release. Well, with that, with the second one, there is, is they're basically calling it disc two, isn't it? Yeah, that's what it looks much. like on yeah, Spotify. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, for sure. But he said that specifically on Twitter, um, and I mean, it's cool. Like, are they throwaways or are they actual records that are like you'd be playing out? They're just more, you know. What I'm yeah, saying? It's, like, it's just, they, it definitely has a different sound than the first right, one. Right, right, right. So it's like you know, I don't know how I don't know what your future knowledge is so much but very he, limited okay he had an album. <laughs> same damn time right <laughs> right, right jersey <laughs> yes. he, had a, he had an album he had an album called hendrix which was a little bit slower a little more r&b-ish kind of singing this is where the second album seems to kind of yeah pick up from you know what i'm saying where the first one is very aggressive you know early future energy the second one is much more just like crooning and him doing his singing rapping hybrid thing are there any club records on the second one? Didn't you say there was one or no? The there... Red Leather, you, again, yeah, Red Leather. Like, that's cool. That's like a cool record. But for the most part, they're just so slow. What about the first album besides the ones that, I mean, there's some, there's what, there's three that are charting. Are there more or would you say that I like, think type is there shit, one that, type, type shit, okay. Type yeah. shit is the one like that. And then it, it really just comes down to what you want to do. You know, kind of just like, can you freak it on your own as a DJ and make it work? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because I feel like... What was that- the other one that was charting, though? There was another one that we were just talking about that was... There was type shit, and He's, then there was... I oh, think- the type... I'm sorry, that, my bad. I'm thinking like that, but then type shit is the other one that is the with Travis and Playboy. Yeah, and then the We Still Don't Trust You with The Weeknd. I think that's... Is that the intro or... I don't know, but... Yeah, that's the, the intro. Yeah, so that needs a bit of a remix, too. But yeah. the potential is there for it to be something you know what i'm saying so it's it, you know it's a good album I, or albums i should say um and there's enough to keep it up there on for for weeks depending on where you are in the country obviously nice all right i think uh, i think uh fade aka the pandas should do a remix to Boom. we don't trust we don't yeah, trust need, you uh, i'm gonna go through and listen see what uh <laughs> get on that what we can now work on uh okay cool well uh beyonce's album i know that last time we were talking about the single but now the whole album came out did you guys listen to it it's kind of part country ish and then uh but it seems like like the girls are really really have there's like a good response from uh females on this like on this whole album it seems like a pretty powerful you know it's fun and i think it's light but it's also some like good so i think it's better than a, probably her renaissance one right or what's your guys thoughts uh renaissance uh, is still ringing in these dc streets yeah, yeah. really oh yeah oh yeah, yeah. same up what here song too. what okay the whole, maybe the whole, the whole album like literally just because 
its sound was so different and we're about to get it's about to be warm so i feel like it's just kind of repeating itself like, yeah you know what i mean it's just like what's the what's the record that if you had to play one from renaissance that uh there's so many remixes though i think that's the thing oh, about okay. it is all the remixes my man matthias made a, a remix that went crazy viral and, oh um, that yeah i still yeah, need that <laughs> and i'll send it to you <laughs> um but hit so it's just like it never really fell out of favor in dc her uh, she's just a an open format DC. okay so wait so this was more like that whole album was pretty up tempo right yes Okay, yeah. so where are you playing these records? These, uh, these open is, format rooms or are these more like parties that you're like they is, know? This is parties and urban night for sure. You know what I'm saying? Like the open format stuff, it's one or two songs that I feel, but it didn't obviously it didn't hit as hard as with the parties and the and the uh, urban nights. You know what I'm saying? Okay, and even in like urban night, like she has a great album, but Beyonce's kind of like not getting played after one o'clock, right? What but like yes. wow. it's early or like late? Yeah. What about this new album now? What are you playing in Texas Hold'em or is it's anyone mad remixes? There's yeah. so many remixes of of the actual Texas Hold'em song, and there's another song that's that I'm gonna save for later to talk about, but that uh, that's been going off in DC as well too. So, mm. um, you know, she's Beyonce, man. She just has DC in a chokehold because again, there's so many parties, and clubs, and stuff like that that you just you don't escape her music in any way, shape, or form. Cool. All right. You guys got anything else? You good on that? Um, I think Jolene would be a good... I mean, you know, it's a classic, but right. her uh, her take on it is amazing, and I feel like it would be a good sing-along. I'm sure there's going to be an edit, edits or a few coming out. And um, Yaya is a good record for like... Yeah, uh, yeah. It's not definitely for like not the club, but it's, it samples uh, these boots that are made for walking. And I feel yeah, like, you know, yeah, yeah. you do like a throwback set with like Hey Ya or like that type of uh, temple will work so nice cool all right um to moving on to rap beefs this was mm. <laughs> this was a late ad but um i think you guys want to i think who, who wants to start this one off because oh is it man or drink jerome before we go no. <laughs> oh, you're, you're gonna have to, somebody else is gonna have to start this one off. Uh, i mean i got it um, i don't i can't even explain it i i mean i know what's going on kind of but yeah, for um sure. I'm kind of more. I just look at the memes, wellness. man. Just <laughs> like um, you know, Kendrick. Uh, so that song, first person shooter, uh, J Cole in his verse said it's big three, me, Aubrey, and Ken Kendrick, Aubrey, and me, or something like that. And Kendrick's always been just a, a rapper, rapper, competitive sport rapper. Yada, yada cool. Um, and so obviously in his verse and like that, he just said MF the big three, it's just big me. And then he kind of, he had a little light work for J. Cole. I felt like he was kind of more so directing his, his anger at, at Drake. And, uh, so then obviously, you know, everybody's excited and all that. A couple of B list rappers, C list rappers that like were defending J. Cole, whatever, whatever. Cole puts his album, his song out, which was decent. It was enough to where he would have been like, all right, this is cool. He then bows out on stage at his uh, Dreamville festival. tour. Yeah. I saw that. Yeah, yeah. He basically yeah. apologized. He did apologize. Yeah, yeah. He, he, did felt apologize. Bad. he said, this is the lamest thing I've done. I felt so goofy. Kendrick needs to hit me in the chin. All sorts of kind of weird stuff. Bro, just, you know. And the worst part about it to me was Cole's verses lately have been really good. And he's been talking, he's been talking that talk. Like he called himself Muhammad Ali and he's really putting himself out there like, I'm the best. So it's like, cool, you're the best, you know? So unfortunately he didn't live up to that um bowing out unfortunately um and then drake came back with his song called push-ups i just yeah. got it off hmc earlier today actually which is awesome someone um, just said i just saw something yeah, just that, that wasn't it real right no it's people real. yeah people were debating it but it's real it's real it's okay real. But like the first like day, two different yeah. versions of the same yeah, song yeah and I, yeah, yeah. For sure. the first day the people thought it was ai but like those are debate back and forth okay so it, it is, is real, real but yeah. is it not that good i didn't listen to it i thought it was yeah. actually pretty decent he hit back on some key points he stood up for himself i think the one thing you can't say about drake is drake is battle tested like he's not he's not afraid to step into the ring um he obviously uh you know i don't know if you i don't feel you want to push the t thing but you're, you're you're welcome to feel however you want but at least he stepped up to the plate right yeah um and i would say maybe three hours four hours later 
after the Drake record drops, here comes a Rick Ross record. And Rick <laughs> oh, Ross, I did not hear that one. Oh, it's on it's on HMC. I got yeah, it's right below uh, yeah. that Drake record. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> the the is the best part about it is like Rick Ross. You know, Ross is Ross, but he's just funny. He's just trolling. He's he's talking about his nose job. He's he's speaking about Drake got a nose job. That's, that's <laughs> the whole. That's what this, that's 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 your response. That's everybody's response. Oh, you now I got to look at photos. on a second. Right? Is, is there below, before and after? <laughs> oh yeah. If you get on Instagram, there's below before and after everywhere. I'm into uh, the gossip. I don't really care about the rest. That's why. Yeah. Like, that's why I'm into it. You got to We got to look at Rick Ross's Instagram story. I'm sure he's yeah, he's going it. in. He's and going Twitter on. too. He's going crazy on Twitter. Twitter. So then, um, or X. Yeah, he's been like. But didn't somebody say that Rick Ross's biggest hits were with Drake anyway? They're all, there's just all this conversation now. This this, is why is everyone so mad at everybody? What the like? What you know? I, just I feel like I feel like the, my theory is like, yo, they're at home, like on. They're probably in a group text. It's like, yo, man, like you know, it's just getting boring. Let's right. just fucking start some shit. You yeah. know, like let's get people talking. Like I feel like that too because there's not a lot of talk in at least the like. I feel oh, like everyone's the rap talking about community. John Summit and fucking yeah. Dom Dollar and shit. You know? I, I just yeah be- well then that, it goes back to what they were saying last year there wasn't a number one hip hop album last year right or something like that or was it a single or whatever it was but it's just right. like it, it's been kind of the genre has just not had a, a a strong year at least past two years and it's only uh, I don't know I, I mean maybe that is the, the the whole thing with they're they're trying to start beefs to try to spark things up but. I mean it's crazy like how all like the the scandal is just getting dumped on us. Like it's week after week. Like there's yeah. always something new to even this beef. It was like first person shooter, then Kendrick came back, and then J. Cole the week after. Then the J. Cole apologized the week after that. Like it's just all of this clumped into one. I heard that um, somebody wrote that it, the top, like the top news uh, trending is like that beef, and then like. World, world Bro. issue. <laughs> <laughs> it was crazy. Somebody posted it on Instagram. I was like, "Oh shit!" It's. I mean, it, shit. It could be a good PR stunt at the end of the day. Like you're getting, you know, people talking about it, and maybe I, isn't J Cole and Drake? Aren't they on tour right now? They just finished up. Oh, they yeah. just finished. I was gonna say just maybe it was pushing. Up. Yeah. yeah. So there was a little bit of like weirdness because Cole was on the Future Metro album. So it was like, why, you know? Like, oh, and then that happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was kind of like a little bit of weirdness. Wow. Um, and so I think that, you know, I think Five is right there in a the group chat. It's kind of like, hey, man, what's up? We need to shake some spark shit it up. and just get the music going again. I think you know, hip hop has a good place when it, when those guys are at their best. And yeah, we haven't heard a lot from them recently, except for Drake. We've heard a ton from Drake. Um, but even even you know, people kind of get sick. It just kind of got monotonous after a while. So. Yeah. True. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, moving on from hip hop to the Coachella um, performances. Uh, I'm not sure if you guys caught them all, or you know. I think the big story, at least in the DJ world, is the Grimes incident. And I don't know if you guys you, are all three of you aware of what happened in the situation or I saw it. Yeah, 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 okay, I saw it. cool. So we can actually speak on this. Um, I don't know. I I, I think that uh, if for people that are listening that are not aware of it, it's basically it seemed like her set. She had some technical difficulties um, where she's claiming that the BPMs were doubled or they were half time. I think they were half timed. And she didn't know how to do the math to get you know, out of it, yeah. To get out of it, or, or the sync wasn't working. And and then I was reading some other stuff. They're saying that like that's a known issue in the pine in the CDJs where the sync doesn't work if you have it the tempo at half or something yeah. like that. So it's yeah. like if you're trying to mix uh, sixty, a uh, uh, hip hop record that's half time to sixty, right? And you're trying to do like a half time to like a house mix, whatever, like. To you know, 120. 120 to 120 yeah. it goes crazy i've done that where the song just goes in like one four like super goes, fast yeah it goes super fast and uh in the club and uh because you it's gotta, trying to match 120 right. it's trying to think but yeah it, it just, it just yeah, goes crazy time. but it does happen but yeah she was definitely trying to use sync and it's just you know kind of it was a disaster on stage and if you guys did not see all the clips but she's screaming it's just it wasn't handled 
properly even if there was things that were messed up like you're professional you should probably handle things a little bit better and i think we've all been in situations where shit doesn't yeah. work like i was playing in a city i'm not gonna say but um <laughs> on that new a that new a9 mixer uh the crossfader went out just doesn't it was bleeding so uh if i went to the left side it was playing the right side too if the channel is up oh, that, so yeah. and then you know like the, the the curve of the fader you can adjust that you know there's just like three different things uh if we put it in the middle it ducked all the music oh, in wow. the whole room and we didn't know oh, what wow. what was going on so we rebooted the mixer rebooted the serato everything but there was something wrong with it but anyway the more of the story is like I think we've all been in situations where things don't work properly and you just got to roll with it and yeah just trouble you know, at the end of the spot. day it's yeah. you know it's no one the management doesn't care gm doesn't care you can't explain it to gm be like well the mixer doesn't work it's like bro like you still got to go up so i think the end of the story on this whole thing or just my viewpoint on this whole thing is that she wasn't prepared for what if and i think that's kind of what gets yeah, she me should more done a pre-recorded set like Pre everyone else recorded set I mean, you're in Coachella, <laughs> but you know, on, on the flip to that, I actually do have a lot of respect for the fact that she she does do it. She does do it on her. It's not a pre pre recorded. She, well, she I mean, in this case, I mean, in she this screamed. case, it did not work. But, yeah, but, but she, we I, doubt we now know her technique. It's not a pre recorded set. It just didn't work for but her. But you should still set. have a pre recorded set. I think. It, it, look, if any sure, of us were doing sure, I, I Coachella, get that. I'm gonna do. I would. I would have my real set yeah. and then i would have backups i would have different sticks and drives and everything just in I, case something goes wrong i, she definitely I get it practice i i get it yeah i think and i think she should have practiced but one of the things i heard her was the outsourcing bpms thing that she said because I, a lot of people were like well what exactly does that mean you know what i'm saying like i, I don't use record box that much i use i still use serato but you know if you're analyzing these things and when you put your usb stick in like the bpms are there and i don't know i knew her as a performer i didn't know her as a dj so much yeah. but i figure you're gonna know what the bpms are you're gonna at least know what that is so let's say you outsource them to kind of put the blame on somebody else yeah that seemed kind of like an unfair and sometimes you just hit the wrong uh say like the the pitch right you can go from 6 10 16 wide to wide and right. sometimes i'll just my fat fingers hit wide. I don't know what's going on. I'm like trying to like, you know, <laughs> like beat match and like this shit's going like, da -da 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 -da, like just so it just a lot can go on like when you're, you know, on the CDJ. So, yeah, I mean, yeah. the only thing that I have, I, 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 I think it sucks. And like, I'm cheering her on for next, next weekend, next weekend. <laughs> yeah. That's going to be like a redemption. I was just talking to a, a DJ out of Chicago about it. And like this is going to be make or break, but I bet her stage is going to be twice as packed. And yeah, I just not hope people she want to see it. Yeah. Well, yeah. she's making. I heard somebody said they're making T-shirts or they're making merch right now that says like I can't don't something I'm not good at math or Dude, whatever. That was my only thing. I was like, look, man, I'm cheering her <laughs> on, but like, don't get on the mic and tell me about math. Yeah. Like, I'm not at Coachella. I'm rolling my face <laughs> off or I'm like high as fuck or drunk. Don't talk to me about math. Yeah. I won't know what you're talking about. No way. <laughs> Smacking cheeks or yeah, buns crush, or crush, crush, crush crush buns. Crushing crush buns. buns. Don't talk so that, to me about math. <laughs> oh, man. <Yeah. laughs> Yo, oh dude, I was watching, God. I was listening to it. I was just like, I'm not good at math. I'm like, <laughs> half the crowd's probably like, dog, neither are we. But like, just play the song. Yeah. <laughs> For real. No one knows what's going on. But. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Well, math. we'll definitely uh, see if she recovers um, after this. But yeah. All right, cool. Moving on to segment uh, number four. Let's go on to the top fives. We'll run through these really quick. Uh, top five records that you are playing out. I'll, I'll just start it off really quick. This is in front of me. Sexy Red, Get It Sexy. I just like the hook on that. I don't matter. Are you guys playing the verse on that? Or is it? I play I, it. I play you play the, the verse. verse? Yeah, okay. yeah, I play the verse, yeah. I think our parties are maybe a little bit different. <laughs> but uh, yeah. Okay. Future Metro Boomin, like that. Uh, I love the intro on that record. Uh, Fade, I like the Choose. I like what you guys did. Choose. Five. Yeah. Choose. yeah i like that a lot and then uh the the g easy lady killers too uh, i just started playing that just because oh, it was wow. kind of trending and like i don't know i played it more at the end of the night just to throw it in there but it's kind of a fun you know record to end it 
But uh, yeah. All right. Who wants to go next? Okay, five. You uh, go. <laughs> <laughs> I also had like that on my list. Get it sexy. Also, um, Bryson Teller, whatever she wants. Yeah, that's a good oh, one. That is a, a one. banger. I was just listening to that album. I, I so didn't good. get a chance to finish um, it. I don't know that record. Is it oh, slower? It, no, no, it's like a hundred uh, ninety what ninety eight? Ninety seven. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good record. Great good record. record. Um yeah. Deluxe played it at Live uh last week for Don Tolliver. It went off. I good played one. it in Hawaii. Um What is it called? Just, Whatever she wants. Whatever Bryson she Tiller. wants. It's good. It's, it's like the lead single banger. off the album. It's really good. Yeah. Really good song. It's probably going to be what? the best song yeah, on the album. It makes sense. Off the album. Whatever she um, wants. Okay. Uh, Teddy Swims, t- the Tiesto remix. Tyla, Truth for Truth Dare. Oh, shit. Yeah. That's the one. That's my list. Is, is, yeah. that, uh, is that another slower record, Truth or Dare, from Tyla? No, it's like a 115. 110, 115. Okay. It's a uh, vibe. Is it I'm uh, a Piano? Around around that vibe, like Afrobeat, uh, I'm on piano, Afrobeats, R and B. I don't know. I'm gonna okay. get shit for it, <laughs> dude. You're gonna get some guy in there and be like, "That's not that." Yeah, yeah. That's no. not even the genre. <laughs> you uh, pick one, you stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking dumb buds over there. The dumb buds. Yeah. All right. Uh, I've I've also been playing a, a Tyla record called Jump. Uh, oh, it's, yeah. it's really oh. good. Um, I have been playing uh, Jungle uh, back on 74. I'm not sure if you guys are playing that record. Ah. It's like double time. Uh, amazing song. Like really, really good. Just good, good vibes. Uh, two, I have Two Hands to Heaven off the Beyonce album. It's a, oh. little, it's a little dancey. It's a little dancey. And then I know we all have, we've all played... Oh well, I also like that as well. And then the last one I'm playing is uh, uh, you guys have that single song. It's called May Day or More. It's it's a banger. We've all played it before, um, but there's a couple new like Jersey remixes of it. Oh wow! And one of them that I have, and it's just like uh, the uh, editor's name is Ballads. I think we oh, all might have some Ballads yeah, yeah. edits. So Ballads yeah, yeah, did yeah. an edit of this single record, and it just it just the the party goes crazy when you play it. Love Sango so, or love ballads. Yeah, yeah, for sure. They're both. Uh, Neil, what you got? Um, I'm playing "Get It Sexy," "Sexy Red." Um, the A minor edit mm. out of uh, Charlotte, North Carolina. He did one. He did like this mashup that was crazy, um, and I can't even think of the instrumental it was done on. But it, the second you hear it, it's it's fire. Um. Still doing Soak City, uh, 310 Baby. That's mm. starting to get like really big out here. Uh, it de- definitely gets the crowd moving. Uh, carnival type shit like that. Like pretty much all the Metro stuff. Um, and another big one is for sure. For oh, sure. Yeah. Cash Cobain. Incredible. Cash Cobain. It's slow, but you just drop it on the one, let him go. Goes crazy. Goes nuts. Yeah. DC loves that record. Wait, cool. which one? For sure, yeah, Fisher. Yeah, that one. It says like F I S H R. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's been sharding. I didn't know how to. I just kind of ignore it every time I have to read it because I don't know how to say that. Okay. Yeah, Yeah, you just drop it it on the one, and there's like a whole dance to that. What do do they call that? Damn. I probably should have been listing that one when I read these things off. I just kind of usually go around it. They call (laughs) they call the dance the the Reeveski. The uh, Reem ski. ski because Can you so, do it for us really quick in the podcast? Uh, absolutely not. No, no my, okay. hell no. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a body roll and a yeah, pop lock yeah. at the same time. <laughs> my, 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 my knee, I'm, my knees, I'm here my for that. Knees. I'm here my, for that. Yeah, Let's, uh, I'll fucking throw my back out on that know, one. My knees won't <laughs> let me do that. But, uh, <laughs> so it's dope because that record and like that and Boss Man D'Lo are all like same BPM. Yeah, so Boss those, Man D'Lo, there's got he has four yeah, tracks. Yeah, that whole mixtape rings off in DC. You can play the whole wow. mixtape. Yeah, yeah. So Boss Man D'Lo's from Texas, is he? I thought it was Florida. I'm not yeah, sure. He's Florida. Florida. Yeah, he's Florida. Florida. All right, all right, guys. Cool. Ones to watch. Uh, this is Neil's favorite segment. That uh, songs that are bubbling. Um, I'll go with Artemis. I think that's how you say it. I like the way you kiss me. It's like a rock indie rock kind of record, but. There's some uh, remixes coming out that's they're pretty good. Big Sean Precision. I don't know if that oh. song is gonna be 
big, but I kind of like the way the energy on it. <clears throat> uh, I'm not sure if people are playing. Are you guys playing that at all? No, not I think yet. He got, I think he got swept under the rug, unfortunately, when all the beef uh, happened. It came I just out like, like where he's just like so. that. He's like, psh, 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 yeah, 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 yeah. It's, it's, it's a cool, it's, it's a, a cool good record. record. It's a yeah, good yeah, record. It's, yeah, it's good. It's a good record, dude. Big and then, Sean is dope, man. I don't care what anybody says. I think <laughs> literally got, that dude's an animal. I he's a beast. Are you playing that record, Neil? No, 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 I'm not. But <laughs> like, I, I've Great. always just awesome. been a fan of Big Sean. <laughs> man, I love your shit. <laughs> yeah, dude, no, I love that's why you, I said so, Big yeah. Sean. Big Sean is a beast. Oh, shit. Jersey. Be- I know what beast he's means. A be- yeah. He's a beast, yeah. but yeah, I, d- I don't know this song. There's a lot of new music well, that came out. Precision's good. It's a good song. And then uh, the other one wants to watch uh, for me is Bryson Tiller, Whatever She Wants. What we just talked about? <laughs> I know, but I, I'm just letting you guys know I'm watching it now. So that's. Uh, I added that to my amazing. list. Amazing, yeah. amazing, amazing. I, I'm actually laughing, but I did the same thing. He's, like the, kid that, <laughs> he's like the kid that cheats on the whole of the Asian guy. Oh he's like, he cheated on the whole of the Asian kid next to him. <laughs> Five named one. I was like, oh. Oh yeah, and I'm like, <laughs> you just say I cheated off the Asian kid. <laughs> no, no joke. I did. I just did. I'm like, oh. oh my god! Oh, god. Oh, oh. He said that with a straight face. <laughs> no, it's good. That's, that was funny. Oh my god! <laughs> oh my. Oh wow! Yo, awesome moment. Oh, <laughs> um. So there's a oh. song, there's an artist named Shabuzi. Uh, Shabuzi? Who, he was actually on the Beyonce album. Uh, and he has a song called, he, the song is called A Bar Song, in parentheses, Tipsy. So he's 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 incorporating the lyrics of Jaquan's Tipsy into the song. And it's going to be one of these sort of like black crossover country records that I think is going to end up doing really well. Uh, we'll hear we'll hear people in Nashville remixing it and like stuff nice. like that. So that's a really good record. Um, the Two Hands to Heaven by Beyonce, I think, is going to continue to uh, continue to just get bigger and bigger uh, because people are starting. To, I've seen some remixes starting to bubble now. Um, so those are really the only two, unfortunately, that I had to watch because everything else is just already out there. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I had Artemis uh, on the ones to watch, and uh, I guess uh, Sabrina Carpenter, the espresso. That's what, like, is that's that a good I one? I haven't heard it. I just saw it. I feel like there's there's a lot going to be remixes coming out too. So, but I mean, the song is a good song, and then Money Long. Did we talk about that the last episode? Oh, uh, Money- I threw that on my ones to watch, or um, the Ghost Town DJs remix one. Oh that no, money, I didn't know that one. Made for me, money long. So that's my three. And Bryson cool, Tiller. <laughs> oh, yeah, I, there's a Kabu C A B U edit. I think he's Australian of that made for me. That's like oh, wow. crazy. Yeah, yeah. That song is good too. Uh, all right, Neil, go ahead. Um, I have show of hands, future Metro Boomin, A Saparaki. Um, that's off the We Still Don't Trust You album. Um I've been getting a uh, a couple requests here and there for Von Dutch, Charlie XCX. Mm. Um, and Finesse, Boss Mandilo. Truth or Dare, Tyla. Big shout out to Five for that one. <laughs> <laughs> the Asian kid. <laughs> but, but we know that was, that was already on your list. <laughs> yeah. Yo, you gotta, you gotta, yeah, clip, you gotta, it clip, was, you gotta it clip was. that, you gotta clip that. <laughs> Jersey was straight up like, what, what was this song? Present Tiller, what? I never, I never heard of it. <laughs> and the next one's like, the ones to watch, I got Present Tiller. <laughs> oh my God, dude, that was hilarious. That was too funny. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, Eat the Bass, John Summit. Mm, oh yeah, that's the new one that just came out like this yeah. weekend. Cool. That one is, that one's was pretty Was that at Coachella? Did he, did they premiere that Coachella or is that? Well, he teased it like, with the logo and it says ass. So I thought the song was called Eat the Ass. I'm like, damn, he's going crazy. All right. <laughs> yeah, he's going in. <laughs> oh, wow. He's All the right, sexy John. red of uh of dance music. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Eat the ass. 
Eat the ass. All right, cool. Uh, new segment. What's the scenario? Actually, it's not new. It's just we we switched the name up on it. It's our uh, <clears throat> what was it? The sticky, sticky situation. situation. We we, we want to do more of a what's the scenario, and if you guys understand, you guys were testing me on that. I know that was tribe. Thank you, um, <laughs> man. But did, the, okay, honestly, did you Google it? No, I knew. I I know. I know tribe guys. I'm not that that out of it all right uh so <laughs> now nah, tribe is big in the birds like in chicago right? okay okay <laughs> <laughs> we could have just left it at just, all right anyway uh this one is uh, how to stick the landing so here's a scenario if the lights come on crowd is chanting one more song what's the one track that you're gonna play to end the night who wants to go first somebody I mean, I want to send them home with uh fuck there's so many though like i, I do so, like, like work on just one that's you i do know work that on a closing be, set so they're yeah chanting like, they're chanting there's a lot of people chanting so like i thought about this too if people are chanting i probably wouldn't come right off with a slow slow song like you know but i don't know i that actually that would go too i don't that's know that's very hard uh but, i would i saw this work in one oak one night and it was um What's the joint called? Uh, what's the one? It's the golly the magician remix. Um, oh, I follow rivers. I follow yeah, rivers. Yeah, yeah, mm. yeah. I follow rivers. I saw it at the end of one oak one night, and it, it just that's it a good perfect. feel good like yeah. closing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not, 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 not no, like nobody's getting stabbed when that. Yeah, song yeah. Comes on. You know, what I would mean? say, I would say like uh, P Rain, drunken fuck, or like um, doses and mimosas. We talk about this song Ooh. a lot on yeah, the yeah, show. Yeah, yeah. That's but a like big college doses record. and yeah, mimosas. Yeah. Yeah. Doses and samosas. 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 <laughs> doses and samosas. I was like, damn, did I just but say yeah, that? I made I like I have a whole playlist of like close out songs. Like, so there's all kinds of shit in it. I got, yeah, what do you guys got? I got okay. So depending on how rowdy they are, but uh, and how I guess I don't know. It I had Queen Bohemian Rhapsody, just that dun, dun, oh, yeah. dun, 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 part where it's like oh, I see, dun, 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 dun. that was just you know whatever, and it, and it depends on how wild they are, and then also Tame Impala, I think uh, the less I know the yeah. better. I think that's a good kind of. I think it depends on the crowd. If you got like a really nerdy crowd, you could do the Queen. If you got like this music lovers, you could kind of go more on the Tame Impala. But yeah. those are my two. I still have Don't Stop Me Now. <laughs> Seriously, I did that shit at Lucy's. How does that song go again? Five <laughs> Q five. Don't I've actually never sang along now. to. Me. <laughs> I'm having such a good time. But you gotta do the running. Been the, the party. The, 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 he's, he, he, last time he was like <sighs> <sighs> headphones running. on. This how I look too, like running. I don't use Air, AirPods. I use uh, over ears. The big ones. Yeah. Um, cool. All right. Is that all we got? We're good, guys. Um, oh yeah. Then. Uh, all right. Let's go to slappers real quick. Uh, sneaky slappers. Some stuff I discovered over the weekend. Uh, Rihanna, only girl in the world. Apparently, every girl loves that record. And I mean, I've been rocking that though. But I guess it's different in the burbs out there. Right? Like, I don't live in the burbs. <laughs> Why do you keep saying? I, I I don't know. I just thought that record like no, I never really big, yeah. I, never, I didn't really like play it that much. I just kind of was like, whatever. It was like a filler. But the fact that every single girl was singing at the top of their lungs, yeah. uh, that, I don't know, that kind of tr- proved me otherwise. And then Gwen Stefani, Sweet Escape. Mm, oh, yeah. Wow. That's a banger. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, didn't, I didn't even think about that one, but yeah. it, it came back really strong. Yeah. And then um, this is a really strange one, but I heard somebody play it and I didn't... I. I have no idea why it worked, but Jordan Sparks No Air with Chris Brown. Oh, wow. That was like the end of a set somebody was playing. It was like the end of the night, and they dropped it, kind of like chilling people out. But uh, it was like a big record. Like, I don't know. That was It's like a real curveball, but Interesting. I don't know. Wow. Yeah. That's, that's, that's a move. That's crazy. Mm-hmm. Um, I would say... Um, do you guys have the Mac Miller called the Spins? Yes. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah. my Holy god, shit. I've been yes. getting requests for that. Dude. That, that's a yes. nice what? that's a nice little sneaky slapper right there. Hey, I I'll tell you, I played um a party with like these were like young, I mean these kids were probably I don't even think they were twenty one yet, and one of them played this record and everyone was singing it, and I was like, What the fuck is this? It goes like, crazy. Wild. Yeah. I have no idea. Yeah, that's a good yeah, one. Yeah. That was the one where he 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 rapped over 
half masked by uh, Empire of the Sun. Yes. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, 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 yeah. Yes. Yeah. That so was that, actually played on. It was on the radio in Hawaii. It was so random. Yeah, I just started getting requests for that. Nah, that goes. Yeah. That, it goes. Yeah, it's um, not trending though. It's just so weird that these records just come no, out. No, there's like all these weird records. Like I, I'm telling you, Afro Man has college bangers. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like the Colt 45 song and like this other bass uh, sounding record, like Miami bass sounding record. Like the college the guys kids love Afro Man because I got high. That. No, 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 no. There's they, another one that everyone knows. There's a cult. Wait, 40, there's another dude, Afro Man? Dude, there's a 90, 100 BPM record, and they all sing that. Like, they sing the whole fucking song. Something with Cult 45. And then, yeah. Uh, the, yep. uh, and the Don, the Don Tolliver Bandit, I think it's called. Yeah, Bandit's a big, big that, record. That's, been, that's yeah. been a nice slapper for me, too. Yeah. But going back to Afro Man, let's put it this way. Because I Got High has 189 million streams. Crazy rap, Colt Forty Five has three hundred and twenty-seven million streams. Yeah, the artist you play that? is it a slow record? When you play that, no, it's like the song's BPMs. called Crazy Rap. Uh, it's Colt Forty Five and two zigzags, and it's got double what? Yeah, because I got high half. It's a big, crazy. It's called big. Crazy Rap. I yeah. saw. I, and I was Colt at Excess, and two friends were playing, and they played the song, and like, and I see like all these girls just singing along to it. I was like, what? fucking song is this yeah and i like yep. it. it was Af- yeah. i was like afro man what the fuck dude yeah. that must have been from like what the early 2000s no that, oh, I don't uh, it was on the same new, it's on it's on the same yeah, album definitely as, early 2000s. Um, yeah, it's yeah. on the same out al- it's 2001 it's the same album as because i got high okay yeah. so it's not like a new record it's an old no it's, it's an old record, old but record everyone knows it Damn. i had i played a I played something like last year and somebody asked Afro and I was man. just like, you know what? Fuck it. I'll do it. I downloaded it that uh, on the spot and played it and everyone knew that shit. I yeah. forgot all about it until you just brought it up. <laughs> I mean, crazy. when you search his name, the first song that comes up is that song. It's crazy not even rap. because yeah. it got hot. It's literally yeah, crazy no. rap. And there's some, yeah, there's another one that's like popping right now on TikTok. It's, uh, I forget the name of it. It's like a Miami Bay sounding record, but it sounds janky, but it's still like it's, the kids love it. Cool. All right. Uh, is that it, Jerome? You got? Yeah. Who's, I'm, okay. I'm, yeah. Those two. Uh, who's next? Who wants to take the? I, I'm next, but I, I, don't, I honestly don't have any. Okay. Um, <laughs> I, I think wow. I've built it we out. We were talking so about many doing your homework past. before we got into class. <laughs> no, but, uh, yeah, I have. You just I haven't been able kid, to play. Yeah. To I, I haven't played. <laughs> copy off the H. <laughs> you got to copy off the H hey, again. Hey kid, what do you <laughs> got? <laughs> um, <laughs> Let the H kid go. <laughs> um, the Neil's well, gonna go next. <laughs> Our boy Compose, I saw he played uh, his R&B party. He played uh, Kobe O'Donis, What You Got, and what Oh, else? yeah. And I, I haven't played that record since it came out. So. Dude, that was and, like uh, his Usher, only... GCJ, I Don't Mind. That's a good record. Oh, shit. Oh, yeah, I used to crit. That's used to a kill. sleeper. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I got shit for this. I played... <laughs> I was in New York at maybe like 2018. And, Neil, you might have heard about this. And um, I was playing at either One Oak or Up and Down. And I was... I dropped Baby Bash, <laughs> Baby I'm Back, and <laughs> the homies looked at me like, I'm like, you're, I can't believe you're playing this in New York. I'm like, I was like, you know, I just fucking, I just take chances, man. <laughs> Sometimes you but just now, gotta put the balls uh, on the table. <laughs> now this record's kind of okay. going off. This record's going, I predicted it. This record's going off in 2024. <laughs> it, it made its way, its way back around, so. Jeez, <laughs> so nice. fuck y'all. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck whoever said that shit to me on two, in 2018. The man, I was just, I was I just ahead was of my time. Back. You know, the manager that ran up to him and told him to turn it off. You know, like, like, what yeah, the fuck is this shit? Like, what is this shit? Where's oh, Buster Rhymes? Oh, oh my god! Exactly, yep. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> exactly, oh, exactly. Wow. Um, cool. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Fuck. That's, right, a cool. different, that's a whole different. That's a whole other fucking. Yeah, that's a whole it's other like, conversation. Where's his flash drive? But I know I. Yo, he, <laughs> he ran up on me and up and down one night. I was scared for my life, man. I didn't know oh, what God. to do. I had no um, idea. What to do. We had uh, we had another segment or right, or little uh, EDM slappers. Do you guys just have any, or we're just talking about some EDM left field records that kind of. I'll just throw one out there. Uh, Kelvin Harris thinking about you. That Damn. was. Banger. That's a banger. Kellen sent me Odd Mob left to right. 
and he's like, add this to your Scottsdale slash heist. Oh right? yeah, no, that's a, yeah, that's a big so record. Kel's like, yo, that's the record that's going. Kellen should just be a DJ at this point. He's right. He knows right? enough. He knows everybody. He, he knows the records record. every time. Yeah. He's the one who he Kellen feeds me records too. He's like, dude, you got to be on this one. I'm like, wow. I'm like, we should just have him on the podcast. And they're like, yo, is this guy a DJ? Nope, it's yeah. just Kellen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kellen. <laughs> yeah. Um, um, cool. Anyone? I got John Summit Shiver, but Nova edit with uh, Calvin Harris. Feel so close. It's a slapper. Um, what's that? Uh, this is a big, big song right now. Um, There's just space. Oh, Sippin' Yak. Yeah. Uh, Clooney, Sippin' Yak. The HMC club edit is insane. It, uh, it takes the part of the middle of the song vocal it is it flows better it kind of has it, that like hip house type vibe from like yeah, the 90s another weird record is sample it sampled uh, a tracy tracy lead record oh that that's what that sipping yak sample yeah it's a fat oh. man scoop tracy lee record that was slept on uh, probably you know not on yeah. anyone's radar but yeah they he sampled that and then uh yeah that um the hmc club edit the cases edit and the rick wonder edit all bangers so nice all can be found on hmc uh neil got none okay cool. i'm not no the thing is is i'm not really playing edm at all that's here. true like at all yeah so i'm actually learning from you so guys. we're the losers over here that's what you're trying to say is that, <laughs> catch up it. everyone yeah, yeah. but yeah, yeah we don't do that shit in new york we just but, uh yeah, yeah. Yeah, we'll let you guys do it it's in, like in new the suburbs. york is doing like that's we what do you guys have- do in the suburbs we have That's dance it. clubs, uh, but we have dance clubs and we have open format clubs that ex- on pretty much excludes dance at yeah. this point. So there's like this weird split. So I'm and dance clubs only just house and dance music. Yeah, right. Yeah, there's no open format side to that. It's either one or the other at this point. Um, so I'm clearly on the open format side. I'm not really doing too much dance stuff. And if cool. it is, it's like throwback stuff, like yeah. heroes and heroes. I mean, all that stuff. Wild, bangs too, wild yeah. ones. Yeah. Mm. yeah, those are some good ones, Neil. Thank you for t- participating. In these. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's get to the main segment right here. Jerome Baker the Third from DC, making America dance again. Welcome to the show. This is your um, this is your spotlight, man. We, we're so glad to have you here. We 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 know that yeah. you're a legend, and if anyone who's listening to this podcast is unaware of Jerome Baker the uh, Third, do your homework because the guy's been around for a minute. He's uh, got an amazing brother in Arizona <laughs> yeah. who pumps you up more than anything. Because I've known your brother a lot longer, and then I you know I met you through passing, right. and like, and I know you play uh, in Arizona a lot. Obviously, you do a lot of stuff in DC. But that's where you're, you know, located right now. And and uh, I guess kind of, you know, break it down, man. Like, don't tell us about DC. I don't know. I don't. Have you guys, Neil or Five? Have you guys been played in? I've played DC? in DC. I used to play at Heist. Uh, I played Heist. Shout out once. to Bix, DJ Bix is my boy. He's uh, mm-hmm. one of the owners over there. And uh, Heist goes off. It's a nice little room. Yeah, Heist is our open format lounge room. Um, really kind of, you know, been there for about a decade now. And uh, I've been a resident there since it's been open. So it, it gives me a chance to play a lot of the up-tempo open format records. Keeps nice. me sharp when it comes to that because the crowd tends to be 21 to 27. Um, so when they want to hear the new John Summit, you better have the new John Summit. Yeah. Right. Um, or is that getting angry? No, that's right. Yeah. That, they yeah, get, they yeah, get yeah. crazy. It's, it's you don't want that. No. I, I mean, <laughs> you know how like you have the Wi-Fi for certain clubs? I have the Wi-Fi for the club. So just in case I slipped up and didn't get something, it's there. Uh, DC itself, though, incredible music town. Um, you know, like Bad Brains is from here. So, so you have, hey. you know, Henry Rollins is from here. You yeah. have a lot of musical history. Marvin Gaye is from here. So you have all this music history and the city um, is just a music melting pot. Anything you want uh, to hear, you're going to hear live music seven nights a week, DJ seven nights a week. Uh, you know, every genre is well represented. Um, there's a strong, it's the second, for certain African countries, this is like the second most populous area in the world for them. So like Nigeria, there's there's Nigerians and then there's DC. There's Ethiopians oh, wow. and then there's DC. 
Why so, is that? Is why why did, do they migrate? To, my, is my, that just, yeah, migration patterns probably something in the early 50s, 60s, 70s. Yeah. But also like in the 80s, there was huge Salvadorian migration. They changed a lot of the rules from Salvadorian migration. So you have a tremendously large uh, Hispanic population of all of Central and South America. You know what I mean? So it, with with that being the crowd you're getting on a lot of nights, you have to be well versed in everything. You know what I'm saying? Yes, maybe yeah. towards the end of the night you're going to lean one specific way, particularly with the urban parties. But anything else, you have to be ready. You have to be ready to go, or else you're just not going to be successful. I, I started playing Afrobeat there before Afrobeat was a thing. Yeah, like it. It's always been a thing there. Yeah, it, which it, is I crazy mean, again because you're getting that straight from Nigeria. Yeah. South Africa, whatever, it's being imported like to the right to the vein. You know what I'm saying? Like there's no, there's no three four month wait. No, this shit came out three days ago. You know what are I'm saying? Are there a lot of local? Are are people? Because I know people work in the you know in politics or I guess for the government there, mm -hmm. and they they get flown out or they have to move. Um, would you say the crowd, the, the local residents, they're pretty? It's a pretty diverse crowd in terms of like the local people. I'm not saying so much of like the people that uh, the melting pot people that have to move there, but you know, yeah, just the what people. Yeah, the people who are from here. I mean, you you just get everything. You know what I mean? Like, so it's considered the DMV because DC itself is a small place. The DMV it kind of incorporates the the freeway, like 495, it's like a mm -hmm. circle. So everything within that is considered the DMV, and so you have. Virginia, which has a big military presence, a lot of people who live in, who work in government will live in Northern Virginia. The richest counties in America are in Northern Virginia, right? But then you'll step to like PG County, which is the richest black county in the world. So you have a oh, lot wow. of rich African-Americans out there. Then you go north, west, and you have like uh, Montgomery County, which is a tremendously, like it's a really dope uh, super melting pot. And these are all residents. This isn't like... Is that Maryland? Is that considered yeah, Maryland? Yeah, that's Maryland. Okay. Yeah, that's Maryland. So, so there's Maryland, Virginia. Is there... <clears throat> I guess my question would be like, uh, you know, I, every time I go to D.C., I like... It's usually I just land right by like the, you know, right where Reagan. all the monuments are. Yeah, Reagan, Reagan, yeah. Reagan, yeah. And then like I don't really go anywhere outside of that. So... Uh, I think in Heist is kind of in the city center yeah, over there. Yeah, but downtown. everything else, with the, the, the other clubs you're describing, are those more? Are, is there like a hop, you know, a good area in Virginia and Maryland, or is it like there's areas everywhere? Because, so yeah. where Heist is is pretty much your club, your central club district. Um, you've got 15, 20 venues. They actually shut the streets down every Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and holiday Sunday because wow. there's so many people and with so much traffic with the ubers and all that they don't even want to give it a chance so there's about a four mile radius where you can't get into the downtown area so all the girls are having to walk in their heels stuff like that has actually slowed down a lot of the clubs from being successful they're losing revenue because girls are like i don't want to walk six blocks in heels That's i'd wild. rather go to another area of town shit i don't want to walk six blocks in gym shoes there you go right yeah. so <laughs> You have another area of town that's like, yo, if I live in Northern Virginia, like if I, it's a city called Clarendon, and shout out to our guy DJ Rise and Rise and, and, Rise uh, and Flips do flips, a party out there, right? Say, yeah. Rise Flips, uh, Epics. Epics is out there, DJ Easy, DJ Heat, Will Ta Growley. Will Gro Will Growley. <laughs> <laughs> um Virginia's created its own nightlife district. And it's it's safe it's comparably safer. Um, they close it too. You don't have to worry about getting a ticket because nobody. Is DC wants dangerous? That was, that was my other thing because I mean, like usually, <laughs> I, I, I'm not scared. No, I know what you're thinking. No, it's no, not no, that. No, 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 no. I, I was just saying because like everyone says Chicago is dangerous, and then they always say like they're like, oh, DC is worse, and I'm like, I, I don't, I've never experienced anything bad in DC, mm. but I've also never really stayed out past when the street lights I are mean, dc's earned its reputation i'll say that right so if you want to find it, it it's not tough to find it all but if you're smart you can avoid it as well right well, so when i was there me and my girl was talking about damn but like we could live here like it's so nice and safe blah yeah. blah and the day we we're leaving our uber driver picks us up he's like oh man you guys just missed a shooting down the street i'm like what <laughs> it's very random it's very like random. you missed it like yeah i mean it's like <laughs> again dc's earned it for good or for better or for worse you know what i mean i think chicago is probably the same way yeah right There's la part, too yeah it's just like you it, know it where to be, go but I'm, is it anything like baltimore 
Baltimore is actually safer than DC in 2024. What? Yeah. Wow. The, the, the numbers are saying that Baltimore. Is yes, safer. I heard Baltimore was wild. At one wild. Point, at, at one, but again, Baltimore. <laughs> Baltimore has beautiful parts of the city. I love Baltimore. I'm there often. Big shout out to Baltimore. Movie. I'm yeah, sure yeah. it's a beautiful city, but yeah, what yeah. I saw was <laughs> wild. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know, it, it, we we'll probably see things in all four of our respective cities, and uh, Baltimore yeah. is solid though. But um, you know, it's 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 if somebody says, "Hey, man, don't go to Southside Chicago," you know what I mean? Like, it's all about what their experience has been and what they're trying to warn you about. You know what I'm saying? Oh, I know. Very true. Yeah. Um, but so with like um, Silver Spring, Maryland is right. Is right. It's like uh, like Santa Monica, maybe to LA, and one of those kind of things, right? There's a strip when you come out the street on the right side of the street. There's two blocks. There's about 15 clubs that are owned by African people of African descent. And this is where you go on a Sunday afternoon. You turn your Shazam on and you just let it ride all day. And you will learn about wow. every Afrobeat song you'll ever need in your life. Afrobeats, I'm a piano, any of the other subgenres, because there's a lot of them. And it's some of the best, happiest people you'll meet, but it's just an education in dance hall reggae as well. Um, and so, you know, we do that once a month, go out on a Sunday, 6 to 10, and just learn, learn, learn the food is good. You know what I mean? You're just in that space. Same way, if you go see Rise and them out in uh, Northern Virginia, they're going to play all the EDM that you can stomach. You know what I mean? So <laughs> it just comes down to what your personal preference is. But is that because of col is there a lot more colleges over there? Not, or was it younger or is it well what is the uh I mean truthfully, they were not so fond of the urban scene at one point in time out there. And I think that pandemic made them come around to that, right? So the venues, not rising those guys because they yeah, can yeah. play anything, but the venues now have become way more open to just making money in general. But previous to the pandemic, they didn't need to. They had the, they're rolling four or five nights a week, so we don't necessarily need the perceived uh, trouble that's going to come with urban night parties. And I say urban night just to be funny, but you guys know what I mean. So, yeah. um, <laughs> and so you know, it's just it's it's a great area to just hear any and everybody play. I mean, um, I, I think there's some tremendous DJs. Uh, Rocticon is from Northern Virginia, oh, and yeah. so people yeah. realize they recognize how skillful of a DJ he was. And it's the same story though. Sometimes you got to leave to get recognized. You know what I mean? To just yeah. hit that next level of uh, whatever you're looking for. And so um, it's a, it's really just a tremendous area though. It's a really good place to be for sure. I want to ask about your the music scene there because you, you touched a little bit on the uh, on the Afro beats and like the I'm a piano. Uh, is there a house music scene out there? I know you said a little bit about like the EDM, you know, right. the college. I know there's big universities over big, there. Yeah, colleges. big universities. Probably 250,000 college kids when you really break it down from GW to University of Maryland, Howard, and just all these schools, uh, American University and all this, right? So Santa Con is lit basically out yeah, there. Yeah, for sure. Jesus Christ. Oh, it's, one of, it's one of those Man, days. That <laughs> It's one of those days. Bro. Bigger than New York. So basically, you're saying Santa Con is the shit out there. I think it, I think it's comparable <laughs> to New York, honestly, just because you know we have that government aspect of those people who just want to get that in, and again, all the <laughs> all those kids are running Georgetown, GW, American, UDC, UM, like UMD, Mason. There's just school after school after school. Is it busier um, in the winter than it is in the summer because you do have so many kids that are in school? Is it like this, the times kind of change a little bit? So more? for the downtown clubs, I would say they're probably busier in the winter. But for the parties, summer is unstoppable. That's That was another question I had. Yeah. You, you, you touched a little bit on parties. What parties exactly are you referring to? Are they like, I know you said a little bit more on, uh, was it the, uh, the Sunday party you were Describing, yeah, just, but like, just people day parties, day parties okay. in DC in the summer are unstoppable. I mean, you're doing. They just had a party this past Sunday, thirty five hundred people. Uh, Everyday people is going to be here twice this year. Nice. Uh, there's a guy by the name of Pedro does a party called Adobo, and that's thirty five hundred playing closer to the reggaeton Spanish movement. Um, and then you asked about um, EDM. Echo Stage has been one of the top clubs in the past few four or five years mm -hmm. and a lot of that is edm shows you know what i'm saying but echo stage has also been smart enough to bring in adobo you 3500 spanish kids with whomever the act is and you're just consistently making money you know what i mean so i, I think the edm scene is is well and thriving here because we've had places like u street music hall uh, we have soundcheck we have 
like any any tier level of show you want to go to 100 people 3500 5000 it's here it's pretty diverse yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah well, you sure. got a couple parties though don't you i have a couple parties we have a party called dollar nikki where we play a lot of funk and soul and just like i kind of trap it out a little bit because i like that stuff but people come out for these this is like crazy me because yeah in chicago we've lost every type of we used to have a great sunday uh sunday parties but we never really have curated parties yeah. music wise like yeah. maybe a little bit in the house scene but like we don't like you just said a funk and soul party like yeah. i can't picture something like that or at least maybe i'm not i don't have knowledge of that yeah. because i'm kind of more in the uh what would you say like commercial area like right. I mean, i'm sure there's like other cuts in chicago where they have these parties but like where, where i'm located it's not really like that i mean you know we just we just try to touch on what we like and share that to the people right so my first uh reference for throwing a party actually came from chicago it's a part of chicago called super fun and bro super, super fun was amazing right. so and, in 2008 i'm watching super fun yeah. videos this is where virgil was djing oh, Leonardo wow. Mano, pharrell would be there for, and like the top, of the top yeah so you know so yeah that, i know super that, fun that energy is what we've taken even to now to just say yeah we want to play everything we want to play everything for everybody and just because you have a room full of people who may look like this does not mean they only want to hear this we're yeah. not necessarily forcing it on you but we're gonna find a good remix or a good edit or even play the original in a way that's gonna make you enjoy that particular song right we're gonna social media frame in a particular way the host is gonna be cool the drinks are gonna be cold you know what i'm saying and so for this to be a day party from four to nine people go crazy we had a party we used to do called grilled cheese social the food was all <laughs> grilled I cheese fuck with sandwiches that. i fuck with that yeah grilled cheese it was sounds- 20 it was 20 dollars for your ticket unlimited sandwiches damn from four to six it was like half off jameson i mean man dc's got dc is wild with the names i remember i remember coming visit you and 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 rise and you you took me to a spot called diet starts tomorrow diet starts monday yeah (laughs) i like that diet starts monday i was like wait you guys need to trademark these these are good names yeah yeah listen you know there's the thing that I will say uh, is with DC, a lot of times you start working with a particular venue and you realize like, if we do this the right way, we can outgrow this venue in six months to a year. So this summer we're here. Next summer we're outside with frozen lollipops that have you know, tequila in them and we're charging $20 a ticket, but there's 1,500 people in the space. You know what I'm saying? And the party's from four to nine, four to 10. And your whole day is great. You've met four girls. You're drunk off your ass. You're going to stumble on the Metro home. You're in bed by 1030. Like, what's who? That's great. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's yeah. no, um, there's no, um, nothing better, so to speak. So musically, I think that one of my, one of my better friends, his name is Stereo Faith, 50 year old black guy who plays Brit pop. And that's all. Damn, he's, wow. he's he's a, he's like the expert on Britpop. Like he's cool with all the guys from Smiths and all that shit. But to have him and then to have my best friend, she's Jamaican, and you know what I'm saying. It's just a you know it's just a cool little area to be in, man, for sure. That's dope. Nice. Dope. Um, can you speak on? I want to know more about like, I guess other DC has its own culture, and and you know I think you've touched on it a little bit. Are there certain uh, songs, artists, you got to play in DC. There or is there anything that's like that's an anthem out there, or is it you know? As we as we transition into Urban Night, right? We're gonna go to Urban Night, and <laughs> you're gonna you're, it's gonna get a little rough, and the weed smoke might choke you, and 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 the, and the everybody's wearing all black. You know what I'm saying? You're like, hey man, I'm gonna don't don't pay me in front of these guys. Wait till the club's over to give me the money. Right? I don't want to get robbed. Right? Sounds um, like a fun party. Yeah, I you know love what I'm saying. That. Yeah, and. But, you know, we're going to play our Shy Glizzy. Shy Glizzy is comparable to Chief Keef, right? Shy Glizzy and Chief Keef were beefing at one point in the mid 2000s aughts. So, like, that's the that, that's the anthems. That's the stuff you have to play. Some some Wale records are like that, too. But Oh, as a Wale, like, yeah. yeah. Wale is DC, DC, uh, DC born and bred guy. So, you know, Shy Glizzy mainly has those uh, anthems. And occasionally you get a Baltimore record. What's uh, the biggest Shy Glizzy song, would you say? Uh, well, his verse on Crew, right? Crew was him and Brent Fayez. They're both from the area. And then Chocolate, he has a song called First 48, which is just similar to Don't Like by Keith. Not not Don't Like, uh, Finito. Oh, like, oh. It's, it's every, everybody raps the lyrics to the end of the song. 
it gets the bottles going. It gets the tough talk. I'm I'm tougher than you. <laughs> Uh, chest puffing yeah, up. Yeah, I'm just playing. It. I'm just like, yo. Uh, I'm like, yo. I got five minutes. I got five minutes to kill. Let's go. You know I mean? <laughs> five minutes closer to the end of the night. You know what I mean? That's all I'm trying to get to. Alive. You know. So, gl- uh, glizzy stuff. And again, like I said, there'll be a Baltimore record here and there. And um, you know, it's is just, be more big. Is be more big out there? So the Baltimore club music is not necessarily as big in the clubs. Again, in the parties, yes. However. Some of the stuff that Baltimore Club is known for, the holler board stuff, that's just a bit older now. Yeah. So while it was great 10 to 15 years ago, they've got to continue to make new records. They're still using those breaks. There's still stuff you'll hear, but it's definitely not as, as big as it once was for sure. What about Go-Go? Um, yeah, I was about to ask that. Yeah. So Go-Go has an unfortunate uh, reputation. Wait, wait, hold on. Wait, wait, what's Go-Go? So Go-Go is this very percussive call and response music why that- are you laughing you know I, I was gonna ask you knew that i was gonna you know, ask you that know, well, actually, i'm laughing because five me. started there's, smiling about it but too. there's other people out there that are listening they have no idea what the fuck that is so i please go ahead jerome sorry so they it's interrupted a, it's a very yeah. percussive uh music start they use bongos they use drums yeah full where's band. it from where's from, it from From dc it's from dc yeah. oh so this is just a this is not from like south america no, or no, no, this no, is no. like this is okay washington dc born and bred um, again, it's percussive. They use bongos. They use drums. A lot of call and response with the crowd. Uh, sometimes they're remaking popular songs into uh, go-go versions. Go-go is best experienced at a, at a live, yeah. in a live setting. Um, there have been some amazing go-go hits. Pieces of Me uh, by Ashley Simpson had a re- they redid it, and it was bigger than the actual. Oh no shit! Very yeah, random I'll send song. Yeah. I'll send, no, 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 I'll send it to all y'all. Like it's, a, I played it at R and B and Ribs last year. It was oh, incredible. Yeah. Yeah. Ashley Simpson and goes then, off at R and B and Ribs. Crazy. And cool. then um, <laughs> DJ Cool has a a big go go. Yeah, yeah. Right? He, you know, Cool is part of that first one of early them, generation yeah. of guys. Is the um, tempo all the same? No, no, no. There's a there's a couple different tempos. There's like bounce beat, and then there's regular go go. Um, so it's there's a lot of intricacies within the music but at at its core it's um sort of band work done just incredibly in sync like eu the butt yes eu yeah. the butt is you know that's all the older stuff but i have like and i can i'll send you guys a little pack once we get off so just 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 yeah. in case you ever 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 need it um you have a, like oh shit jerome sent me those 12 records and i can play this these records you know what i mean and um but it's dc born and bred it's uh, very close to the hearts of uh, black locals, you know what I'm saying? But even so, I played a go-go party for a 50-year-old white woman, and that's all she wanted to hear was go-go music, which I was like, this is incredible. Like, that's And dope. she was like rich as fuck, so it paid well. Hey. But, uh, but, you know. <laughs> go-go like, it is. Yeah, you know, but <laughs> it, it, it's the music of the city. It's, it's um, you know, it's it's just, it's what D.C. has. It's part, I mean, let me, let me not say that. It's part of D.C.'s contribution to music. It's not the only, but it's part of it for sure. Wow. Yeah, that, uh, I didn't even know about that. That's Shout awesome. out to Scratchy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Shout out to, thanks, Scratchy, for just uh, walking in the middle of that shot. But anyway, um, no, that's cool. I, yeah. I, I mean, it's interesting to hear that cities have their own, I guess, you know, I guess Chicago has drill, but. But and I then, think Chicago, this would be more like Juke, maybe. like Okay, yeah, yeah, Juke, some, yeah, yeah. Something maybe a little juke, happier, yeah. not, you know, Drill has more a, fun, More danceable. Yeah, Drill, has, to me, has a certain association, you know what I mean? Yeah. And um, this is like... It's angry. It's angry. Right, Go-Go, house? Not, Go-Go doesn't have <laughs> house, right. Go-Go doesn't have to be angry. Go-Go can but be... But Juke is like, kind of like, yeah, for definitely, uh, yeah. Yeah. But uh, then, like, New York had freestyle, were, too. And, like, I guess, like, you know, we yeah. should probably have freestyle, too. But, well, like... If, Jerome, yeah. you were we were talking about it before before you got on the show, and you were telling me that at one point there was a um, some controversy between what was it, like blocks or groups between GoGo. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, certain uh, the GoGo band that you like and support can cause a friction if you don't like like this neighborhood. This is our band. This neighborhood. This is our band. So if we don't like your neighborhood, if we don't like your band, then we're not going to support y'all. You know there's what I'm go-go saying? Beef. Like, there's go-go beef. Not go-go beef. beef, but there's definitely like favoritism that can lead to like, you know, well, we only going to go over here. We only going to go over here. And go-go has had uh, instances of severe violence. Go-go's had times when it wasn't allowed to be, um, you weren't allowed to have actual go-go concerts in the city. 
because there was there was violence. You know what I mean? Oh, I shit. think now that's calmed down tremendously. Um, but you know, it, it was there at one point in time. It can't be denied. But people have seemed to have been able to work their way through the issues, and now there's a lot of uh, it's just they're peaceful. They're they're it's like a concert. They're fun. They happen in clubs. They happen in halls. There's go go for forty five and older. There's young kid go go. It's just again. Do you have to, do you have to play go go? So if you're if if Neil's DJing in in uh, you know in DC, does he have to play go go? Um, no. Okay. No. Unfortunately, it's been to the point where they uh, it's it's had it's had some violence uh, affiliated with it. And so, you know, it just becomes one of those things where it gets a it gets a worse rap than what it really is, and people can use that against it and have used it against it to try to like minimize its importance or minimize its frequency in the city. But again, like I said, nowadays there are uh, you don't hear so much about that, if anything at all. About I'm also a little bit older than probably a lot of the younger go go's. Like I said, there are go go's for people who are 40 plus, and those are smooth sailing. How long has it been around? Since the seventies, oh, early sixties, yeah. yeah. I mean, so, EU d- the butt was like the eighties, like, yeah. like early. So, 80s, so like maybe. the the dude's name was uh, Herbie Lovebug, I believe, and he was oh, a, yeah, the yeah. producer of like uh, Salt and Pepper. Uh, um, a couple of their records had some go go influence. There was a go go band on Def Jam in like eighty four. You know what I mean? So um, there's a guy by the name of Chuck Brown who's credited as the godfather of go go. And so he just, he's one of those people who, I'm not going to say he started it, but I just know when I've hear about the early days of Gogo, it's always affiliated with Chuck Brown. So mm-hmm. there's somebody else out there who I'm sure is going to, you know, say that I've missed something here or there. And that's cool, guys. It's all right. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. You know what I mean? The, the from, keyboard, the yeah, keyboard was, warriors over there. Yeah, yeah. I, was, I, was, I was born in Mesa, Arizona. So let's not get us that, you know? So, um, yeah, that, I, I didn't even know that was uh, a thing or existed. Or yeah, when, when you when next time you come out, bro, we're gonna go on a couple day tour, just just set up like two or three days. Let's go. We can run through it all because I'd love to show you guys all of DC. The good, I want to the, the ask too. You know, you were talking about the different areas and stuff like that. I, I uh, and and if you take us there, like what what is some food? Is, is there stuff that like food's you know, amazing? Like food's what's amazing. is there is there stuff that's like hey, this area is good or yeah, like, yeah. stuff outside you, uh, of like we know like you see the monuments and stuff, but like outside yeah. of that, what's uh, so technically where, where we took five was like Harlem, where five and I ended up <laughs> was like Harlem. It's like the busiest <laughs> intersection in the city, but it's everything, every way. Yeah, the only, yeah. Taco Bell, only Chick Fil A, you know what I mean, Kava, and but you know you go, you walk down that street, and it's all project buildings, and then as soon as you get out of that, it's the biggest amount of gentrification in the city. You know what I'm saying? And there are a ton of uh, Steven Star restaurants who uh, has a bunch of stuff in Philly. There's a, a spot called Union Market, which is a whole neighborhood they built out. Um, the actual, the actual, if you hear somebody say this, Baltimore probably has better food than DC because. Mm. DC is a national foodie type spot. Baltimore, they haven't been driven out by, uh, driven out by the rents just yet. So you mm. get more mom and pop spots. You get more more culture. Soul, you get culture. more culture. You get more soul that, food spots. DC's culture is amazing. So I'm not saying enough culture, but when it comes to the food, it's just so expensive here. You know what I'm saying? Whereas you go yeah. 45 minutes north to. Um, it's like a mom and pop restaurant is going to have yeah. a lot more of an overhead in but, DC than they are exactly. Maryland. But yeah. Five went to some amazing spots when he was here. Like he, he did it right. I did what well, I did. Uh, I did jaunt the two Michelin star. It's crazy. Two Michelin star spot yeah. that was amazing. Uh, we did the breakfast tacos. Yeah. Uh, I forgot what else I did. I mean, there's Ben's chili. Yeah, right? Ben's chili bowl. That's yeah. like I a mean, classic. There's... Whatever, whatever you're looking for, it's yeah. here. Right next to this taco spot, they just opened a Filipino smash burger place. Oh, wow. What? So, yeah. And so, oh, I just heard about that, yeah. actually. So it's called uh, Joya Burger. And they also own a Filipino restaurant that has a bib gourmand. And they have ube, which is a, the ice cream, the purple. Uh, the yeah, yeah. Purple. And so this is all stuff that's still, there's five Michelin star restaurants within four blocks of my apartment. Because, Damn, the, uh, sushi's because out, you want sushi, you can get sushi out there, low end to high end. Everything. 
I just heard about that Fil- Filipino smash burger uh, from my friend Serena, which I have a funny story about that with uh, uh, with you, Jerome. Uh, Serena and my, my my boy Abdul, they're married, uh, awesome couple. But uh, your name popped up in a dinner oh, that we were wow. talking about, and <laughs> my hey. boy Abdul was like, "Yo, man, Jerome Baker." That dude threw a party back in the day that like, <laughs> no joke. He was like, no joke. We were about to break up because of, because of this. Like, I wanted to go out and party. She wanted to argue with me. I think that's how the story went. And he was like, he was like, and I, I chose the party. <laughs> <laughs> hey, not mad at him, man. Hey. Big tell, shout out to Serena Abdul. Tell, tell, tell me, tell me now, man. I owe him a drink. I owe him a drink. I got a couple parties this weekend. We'll have a good time, man, for sure. Nice. But, but you I didn't think, know that, but when I came back uh I, I was actually coming back from his party <laughs> <laughs> but the thing with the area also being so small is you get the different influences northern virginia has a lot of uh asian uh asian influences restaurants food halls yeah things of that nature like the number of them is just uncanny you wouldn't believe how many there are uh, but every 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 country group of people is is uh represented food wise dc area cool well yeah. dude we we will uh we'll take you up on your offer and we'll do a little uh, outing out there the, the earbuds outing and uh we get we, we have a we have a list so far we have to be in uh texas i think it was and we do hawaii right we said we just said that well we have for the one year one. <laughs> we're doing one year in hawaii and uh, Drew, you come on hawaii. that one too if you want and then we gotta right. go to dc so we're yeah. gonna do a little uh a tour eventually once we when uh, the pandas get back at, to at the DC, end of the we'll year pandas come back <laughs> yeah at the yeah, end the of the year with back. all the djs that we interview we should just do like one day party and just like bring them all <laughs> yeah no that makes sense yeah, yeah, yeah just like represent their cities Oh, that's that. Yeah, dude, this is we're we're getting places now. This is it. (laughs) This is good. Cool, man. Well, Jerome, thank you so much for coming on uh, the podcast and, uh, you know, I guess breaking down DC for us. And uh, yeah, that was very amazing. Yeah, man, this is great. So, you know, thank, man, thank you, so much. you guys, man. I appreciate it. Again, I've listened to every episode. Uh, Jersey and I had some conversation earlier this week about just how much of a like, positive resource you guys are. Um, whether you know it or not, because you didn't know people watched it on YouTube. I didn't. But, I, I really don't know. I didn't, yeah. Dude, but, so keep keep saying the good stuff because I like this. I like, yeah, but, yeah, yeah. No, no. Yeah. I just I just think as a resource, you guys are really amazing because you go just a little bit further uh, with all the the charts and stuff like that. I think that stuff really helps because we're always looking. You know, you're always looking for what what am I going to play? Who am I going to play? Yeah, it's a little bit of a cheat code, and then you for still, sure. still got to do your own homework too. Right, we we are, we are one big Asian kid that you get to cheat <laughs> off. Of. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, you guys, <laughs> you guys oh are my also, God. you guys, you guys are also the big dogs. You know what I'm saying? In a, in a lot of people's eyes, and I've hung out with all you guys in different clubs and settings and stuff like that. So I think that it's an invaluable resource. Um, and please continue to do it. Please continue to give back. Just know that you're appreciated and not take it for granted. And um, you know, just thank you guys as much as well. Uh, awesome hey man Amazing. thank you thank so you. much um and you know for all the kind words and uh yeah man it keeps us going you know because we're this is still new for us and we're you know we're seven in but still making changes and uh <clears throat> you know getting our stuff together but no we, that means a lot and um yeah man we, it's always great to you know hear from a friend and, and you know giving your contributions to this podcast makes means a lot and that's what keeps us going so thank you so much for coming on this show and and uh telling us all that and you know helping us out so yeah um and cool guys and anyone else that's listening you know he mentioned youtube and and uh ig and x and thank you for leaving comments and you know all that fun stuff so if you guys want to say something leave some notes uh in the comments because we read them all we'll shout you out also i think neil you wanted to do we're we're gonna do you want to do some edits i think i think this is like we're, we're still talking this out we're trying to figure this out but if you guys want to set, start sending edits to us um and we'll, we'll put them we'll we'll shout them out on the podcast and i think we're gonna like kind of do our top five edits that we got um from you guys so set is the email address i think it's earbuds at headliner music club.com so um earbuds just one word at headliner music club.com you can send your edits in and we'll go over those and kind of like you know I guess pick out our favorites and and then put them up on uh on headliner and yeah. you guys can download them and it just kind of gives you guys a better um 
you know a pool of music that you can choose from and maybe some guys have never been done edits before you know gets gets the shine all of a or, sudden so. yeah or they weren't on your radar you know there's a lot of D, uh djs and stuff that are doing edits that i'm like i've never heard of but this edit there's people that don't dj that do edits now yeah. so it's just yeah correct so yeah so it's it's cool so if you guys don't forget uh earbuds at headliner music club um is the email address to send your edits so that's pretty much it uh thank you again jerome thanks jay um, thank you th guys thank you uh scratchy thank you uh <laughs> for uh being just being scratchy and james <laughs> doing and, scratchy things yeah doing scratchy things and james for always uh holding us down chopping us up and stuff like that so thank you guys for listening and we'll catch you again uh next month all right Yes, sir. Thank you. Later. And uh, don't forget the fourth uh, fourth meal podcast. Oh, yeah. Don't forget <laughs> about that. <laughs> you guys are back. And no, you know what? Hold on. First of all, I've been shouting fourth meal out every single one, and then you guys took hiatus for three months. So I didn't. Yeah. We had a new episode last week. And, uh, uh, I and to our it, playlist yeah. on Spotify, Earbuzz. Uh, yeah. Also, you know? if you're a DJ, do your taxes. Oh, shit. Oh, yeah. yeah. Or get your extension. Or get your extension. <laughs> yeah. I, got, I, I got my extension. On that they... note. <laughs> <laughs> and go download all the... That's a good place to end it right there. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. All right, John. Awesome. Peace. All right, Thank Jerome. You Thank you, man. Thanks, Thank you, guys. All right. Peace.